So I'm joined here by a former Premier League player. Um, he's made over 300 appearances in, in his career, playing for the likes of Fulham, Aston Villa, Bolton Wanderers, um, before finishing his career at Reading. Zach Knight, thank you so much for joining us today. No, it's a pleasure, man. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so, for having me. No, it's a, honestly, thank you for taking time out for us, man. So going all the way back to 2001-2002 season, where you made your Premier League debut. What was going through your head? How did that feel? Premier League debut, was that against Leicester? Yes, correct. You remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll be honest, uh, it was a great, 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 great feeling. I remember it like it was yesterday. I know, you know, a lot, a lot of players come out, it's kind of cliche, but uh, obviously, um, you know, me playing in, uh, I went on loan when I was 19 to Peterborough and, you know, uh, playing a few games there. And then coming back to Fulham and then being in that setup, and then the manager giving me the opportunity to 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 play in the Premiership against Leicester. Um, and obviously, I'm being a Birmingham boy, and Leicester's just down the road. You know, I could, it was easy to bring my family um, to come and watch the first game. So um, it was an amazing experience. Um, it went fast, but I can kind of remember the whole day. You know, what I mean, I remember coming off the last few minutes with cramp. I remember getting man the match. You know, I mean, um, we draw nil nil. Uh, I remember marking um, um, Matt Elliott, and at the time, just being a, a young centre half and just watching him in his career, you know, him being a big boy, and I was kind of like skinny and lanky, mm. and him being like a big six foot five, solid centre half, experience. Um, I think he's Scottish, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a good test for me, but um, yeah, I mean, um, dream come true coming from coming from you know, the streets of Birmingham and always wanting to be to be a footballer, to play at the um, to play in the Premiership was 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 a dream. Yeah, and you you definitely you know spent your most of your career in the Prem, which is a testament to your ability. So you you stayed at Fulham for also like a significant part of your career. How was it over there? How was your relationship with the managers? I know Chris Coleman was your manager at that time as well. Mm-mm. I mean um it was, it was, I'll be honest, it was a great experience. I got there when I was 17 um, under, under Kevin Keegan. And um, he just said to me, he said, listen, you train with the first team from Monday to, to, to Thursday. Friday, you train with the under 18s. And then you play with them on a Saturday. So I had that, that experience of coming from non-league into playing with first team players. And then obviously, um, hopefully changing it and then being that experienced player for the youth team to try and hopefully fast track me to get into the to the first team. Um, unfortunately, that that season, Kevin Keegan left. You know, obviously, um, we got promoted. The first team got promoted. Kev, Kevin Keegan left, left to go to England. And then, uh, you know, come back and the next season, went along to Peterborough. Had a, had a good spell there. Uh, it was supposed to be a month, ended up to three months. Um, we got to the playoffs. And then, and then just come back and then had a number, a number of uh, managers. We had Paul Bracewell. Then, um, then we had John Tagana. And um, that's where it all blossomed for me, being on John, John Tagana. You know, um, playing, playing, you know, he put me in the first team, played me out of position, played me centre midfield. <laughs> Even in the Premiership, he played me centre midfield against Patrick Vieira, Petit. You know, he was just like, you go in there, play and when you go back to centre half you're going to appreciate it you know um, got into the England on the 21s with him mm-hmm. uh, got into the full England national team under under John Tagana so a lot happened for me with John Tagana so you know to this day now I would say he was probably my best I mean probably one of the questions what you you probably was going to ask mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know it's probably one of my um, best managers I've I've had in the sense where having a relationship, you know, I feel that, you know, some players are lucky enough to find a manager where you kind of have a kind of a a father figure away from your own father figure. I mean, I never had a father figure myself, but that was in football terms. We had a really good relationship, you know, where we had our good times, bad times, but he always put his arm around me and wanted me to do better. Yeah, that that was definitely my next question. So thank you for 
for you know giving us giving us your relationship with him. And you played with some really really good players at Fulham. Um, who yeah. do you say till now stood out for you and you knew straight away different class? I'll be honest, uh, we had a lot of good French players come through. Obviously, under Jan Tagane, he brought a lot of French players. Um, obviously, um, Louis Saha. Yeah. Louis Saha, you know, obviously being a, being a defender, him being a striker and training against him every day. You know, his speed, his sharpness. I think the only thing that let him down was just injuries. Even when he um, moved from Fulham to Man United. Yeah. I think um, I think Rio Ferdinand even come out and said, you know, one of the best players he's, he's played with, maybe trained with, was Louis Saha. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, injuries was, you know, got the better of his career. What about having Van der Sar right behind you? Oh, oh Van der Sar, you know, yeah, I mean, um, he'll probably be, be, be the second in the sense where, you know, just having that experience, um, talking all, all the way through the game, you know, regardless if we're, if we're winning, whatever the circumstances, talking to you right, right, left, you know, go forward, what, what, whatever, he just led by example. You know what I mean? And um, so, yeah, he, he was definitely number two for me. Obviously, um, you know, being a defender, um, I definitely gained a lot of experience from him. And who would you say is the best player you've played against? Against? Yeah. It's always going to be a striker for me because obviously, um, mm -hmm, you know, just yeah. defender coming up against you know top goal scorers, and I've always said it, it would be um, Thierry Henry. Yeah, he must have given you a hard time. Yeah, I mean, he's got everything, isn't he? He's, yeah. he's, 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 he's quick. He's good on the ball. You know, there's there's, there's some strikers what are good in the air. Yeah. There's good strikers what can hold it up. He he had everything. Mm. You know what I mean? And then he'll try and like um, they try and talk to you on the pitch. Oh and really? Like, yeah, try and go on like your friends, you know. How's the family? Doesn't know you from, you know? How's the family? Kind of make you switch off, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, maybe not as hit him as hard, you know. Maybe, maybe, maybe put you into that false um, sense of security of like uh, maybe a, a fake friendship on the pitch for ninety minutes. Mm -hmm. Then after he probably doesn't care. He probably see you out. Would even say hello to you. <laughs> but for them ninety minutes, you know, he's trying to get, he's trying to get in your head. You know what I mean? But, you know, I kind of clapped onto that kind of early and um, had some good battles. You know, obviously he scored a few goals. But, um, yeah, he's, he's one of them strikers. I'm not saying, uh, I'm not giving any disrespect to any other strikers, but it's definitely you have to concentrate for, you know, 90 minutes plus with him. Yeah, many will say he's probably the best Premier League striker of all time. So, that, yeah, definitely. For what I've played against? Yes. Yeah, fair. That's that's. And then you you moved to Villa. Um, you you had a really good time at Villa. What made you make the move? Um, which when you when you say made a move, made, made a move away from it or going to it? No, going to Villa. Oh, I'll be honest. That was that, that was weird. I never knew enough about it. Actually, we played against Aston Villa on the weekend. I think we lost two one, and I got um, claimed the own goal. I think Ashley Young whipped the ball in and it kind of like hit, hit my stomach and went in. Mm -hmm. And then um, a few days later, I got a phone call that, you know, we've accepted the bid. And um, and being from Birmingham, being an Aston Villa supporter, it was a, a no-brainer for me. You know, love Fulham, was at Fulham for nine years. You know, it would have been nice to, you know, get a testimonial. But if if your boyhood dream team is going to come in for you, it's it was a no-brainer for me. You know, and you actually honest, scored on your debut as well. Yeah, against Chelsea. I'll yeah. be honest, um, the whole setup. I don't know if you know anything about my experience on my sign Monday, where you know my mum's house got raided by gun police and um, had guns pointed to my head. And then um, that same afternoon, I signed, I signed for Aston Villa. So it was like, um, as I went to go and speak to the manager, because obviously everything came out in the news, and the, as I got to the training ground, the police the police were already there at the training ground. So I missed the I missed the um, the conference, and um, manager. I just said to the manager, "Listen, I can't pick and choose my family. Even though I love my brother, I can't. I don't know what they get up to and what they don't get up to." And anyway, the manager stopped with me. You know, I said, "I've had a, full, uh, a career at Fulham, never been in trouble." You know what I mean? So he stuck with me, and hence why my celebration was while it was when I ran over to the manager because. He could have just told me to go back to, to Fulham, mm. you know what I mean? But he stuck with me and um, 
gave him my dream dream move. So to 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 score on my debut was um was a great feeling, you know what I mean? Great feeling. I I loved every moment at Aston Villa. And and you mentioned Ashley Young um previously. So you played with Ashley Young, James Milner. Was it clear from that time that they were gonna go on and have the the careers that they've had? I'd be honest, it was just clear at the time that there was good players. You know, we 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 had a very good team. The Junker up front, Gabby, um, Gabby, Van mm. uh, Gareth Barry, James Milner, Petra. Oh, that was a team. You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, my first few se- two seasons, I finished. We finished fifth. Yep, and sixth. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, getting into Europe, and I'd be honest, we just felt. We felt unbeatable, you know what I mean? We felt unstoppable. We felt every game that we were winning to, we are going to get something out of it, regardless of who we was playing. You know what I mean? And that was a... I remember having that morale one time at, um, at Fulham. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just having that morale of... And we just had the confidence. You know, we had a togetherness. A team, the boys used to go out together, do a lot together. And then having that same feeling at Aston Villa... Um, and then to see them boys go on to 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 what they did, you know, like Gareth, you know, playing, you know, he's up there with playing the most Premiership games ever. Yeah. Um, Ashley Young's done brilliantly for himself, gone to Man United, won stuff, you know, doing great at Inter Milan right now. You know, Milner just won the Champions League and won um, won the league with Liverpool. You know, I mean, um, great great professionals, not just footballers, great great professionals. You know, you you can be a good footballer. But to be a professional and take your trade seriously, like you can understand why all them boys um, went on and done what they done. And how good was the manager Martin O'Neill? How would you describe him? You know what? He was just he was a players manager. He's one of them. If you're doing well, he doesn't care what you do. You know what I mean? He doesn't care if you're training once a week. Uh, Martin, Martin Larson, my um, centre half partner, he only traded on a Friday. You know, he, he had a couple of injuries. You know, you have to look after everybody differently. But what he gave you on a Saturday was a 10 out of 10 performance. You know what I mean? And the manager's listening like, I don't care how, how, what you do in the week, as long as you perform on a Saturday. Yes, and it's tough when you're out of the team, when the team's doing that well, it's tough. You know, obviously, you don't see that side of a man-to-man manager because you're not playing. But you understand, all right, if I do get a chance, I'm going to have a good run in the team because I see it firsthand. But, you know, mine on it was, um, it was a good manager. Uh, I, re- I really enjoy- I enjoyed playing underneath him. And even when I left, you know, he pulled me into the room and just said, um, Zach, we've accepted the offer. I'm not saying I want you to go. It's, it's some good money for you. It's up to you. He left it in my hands. He wasn't saying, like, basically kicking you out. It was like, you know, you've done brilliantly for us. If you want to stay, you can stay. If you want to move on, you can move on. You know what I mean? Um, so, so, this, so this time around, you kind of had uh, a say as to where you were going and so what made you go to Bolton? Well, they was the team what come in for me. Like I said, it was unexpected as well. Mm. And then uh, maybe towards that time, I kind of felt the back end of that season, I was on the bench a little bit, you know, I think it was a mixture of myself and Curtis Davis. And, um, you know, kind of playing for, playing for a position. And um, I, w- I wanted to play the game. You know what I mean? So I thought I had a Bolton was in the Premiership at the time. If I can go there and play and, and play week in, week out, why not? So, you know, um, I went there and obviously I was there for five years, played some games, um, enjoyed it, um, became club captain that over there. Um, obviously disappointed to get the, rele- um, the relegation under my belt. But, you know, it's, 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 it's football. You know what I mean? Uh, financially, the club wasn't doing particularly well. And on the field, we, we wasn't doing well. Yeah, you 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 did you did play a, a I think I feel like I watched those years and you I feel like you did play a very important role in that in the in the team and every time I watched you you could tell that you were a leader at the back and you know these days you see a lot of defenders that are so concerned about their game and they mm. need a partner who's the leader so you know how would you compare the standard of defending now to when you were playing? I'll be honest though, I'm not gonna say it's 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 better or worse. I just feel when when I was playing, there was a there was a higher quality of defenders. You know what I mean? You probably see that yourself if you look across the board. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um Chelsea's great defenders, Man United great defenders, all the top four or five teams, whatever you want to call them, 
all had great defenders. You know what I mean? And throughout the league, you'll see, I mean, them players were great defenders. Throughout the rest of the league, they had good defenders. Now, you probably you <laughs> find, and that's no disrespect to them, the, the game's changed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the leadership's a little bit different. We've got a few more foreigners are in the game. You know what I mean? Like before, you could count a good five, six solid center, uh, English centre halves. You know what I mean? Now it's a, how many can you count? Yeah, three or four at most. <laughs> you know what I mean? And are they, they're nowhere near the quality what was, you know, the past. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I said, that's not taking any digs of them because it'd be all across the board, strikers, midfielders, defenders. You know what I mean? But um, it's changed a little bit. You know, maybe, maybe the aggression within players has changed a little bit. You probably have a few players what kind of give it and, you know, um, try to control the team and lead by example, but you don't see it as much. Yeah, we've and we've we've already seen a few surprising results as well um, so far in the league with everyone seems to be scoring, you know, um, everywhere. Do you, did you get to play behind closed doors? And do you think at the moment it's making a big difference in, in the players' performances? I never, I mean, the only time we played behind closed doors, if it was like a, maybe a reserve game or a friendly, you know I mean? I never played, I played um, in the sense where it, mean, it meant what it means today. It means a solid three points, you know what I mean? Or it means people going into Europe or Champions League. I've never played in on under the, under them conditions. Um, to watch it, it looks difficult, but it's like it can be a gift, a gift and a curse. Some players, you might see some players do really well because they haven't got the pressure of the crowd. You know what I mean? And then some other players, they might they enjoy being in the crowd like they're entertainers. I can see maybe an, a, a flair midfielder is going to be an, an entertainer once that crowd there. You know what I mean? And like I said, you might have a, a winger or something who kind of enjoys nobody, <laughs> you know, um, when you're running down a wing, is, is talking shit to him the whole game. So, so I think it's a gift and a curse. You know, it, it, it looks tough to be out there. You know what I mean? Just, just from playing, play, playing. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's not going to last forever. So, you know, they just got to, you know, um, everybody's, everybody's in the same boat, you know, so they just got to go out there, you know, enjoy it and um, hopefully um, get that three points or, get that just deserves that then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's great for the fans because we, we finally get to hear who's shouting and who's always screaming on the pitch. And the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but, but, just... but, like, but, but like you said, it can be like some false confidence because, you know, maybe what you do in training, you don't do in the game. So, you know, you're shouting because nobody else is shouting. You know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, you're hearing what you're hearing. It's not, it might not be that. I hear you. I hear you. Just because someone's shouting is like... So, you I mean, know, you get it in the time. Just because someone's shouting doesn't mean they're doing shit. That's true. You know what I mean? So, so how, how do you feel like your, your former sides will fail will, with um, Villa and Fulham? How do you think they'll do this season? Whew. I mean, I, I was just talking about Villa just now. You know, obviously it's great to see, the, you know, um, where they are right now. Um, second in the table. Obviously, they'll probably drop down over the weekend because obviously a um, bad result today. Mm -hmm. Um... I feel Villa would be a good mid-table team this season. You know, I'm being realistic. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, we just scraped relegation last season, so we're not going from one end of the spectrum to the next. You know what I mean? Just to, 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 cap, to, to do better than where we did last season, I think, is a, a good mid-table. Mid We've had a great start. You know what I mean? Long may it continue, but I, I feel, I feel mid-table. Um, Fulham... Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, I feel that they're probably, obviously, they just come up. They're going to be, you know, um, in their favourites to to go down. And um, I, I, I hate to say that about them as well, because, you know, um, even though I'm a Villa fan, you know, Fulham gave them an opportunity and I had some great times there and um, conquered a lot there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, by what I see so far, obviously, I feel that they're, they're, they are favourites to one of, obviously, mm -hmm. what, one of the teams to favourites to go down. Do you, do you think um, Villa's transfers um, made a big difference? And obviously, Oli Watkins came in, you've got Traore. Do you think that's what would probably help them? Barkley as well finish mid table. They got it right. I feel that, yes, I, I feel that they, they, they need is an um, injection of some new players. 
um, in certain areas. I feel like we can still add to it, you know, hopefully um, when January comes, we can get a few more. So I don't think that's enough. Yeah. I don't think it's enough. Fair enough. So you think you know it's going to be Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really do. You know what I mean? Um, there's obviously massive pressure on Jack's shoulders. You know what I mean? Um, defensively, I feel that maybe we can get a next, a, a next defender. You know, probably if, if Tyrone Mings is injured, where do we go to from there? You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And and even up front, you know, we, we we don't look. Even though we have scored some goals, we don't look frightening up front. Like like you know, every time the ball goes forward, we look like we're going to score. So I feel that we you know if we can have a good next few months coming into January. Hopefully we're there or there about you know mid table, you know in the top ten. You know it'd be nice to 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 add a few more fair players and maybe a next defender. Mm. And you're a, you're a former England international, so. This is probably the best insight we're gonna get. Jack Grealish in England, he, you know, we watch him even today. Watching him, he, you can tell, you know, he's a great player. But for some reason, Southgate doesn't seem to fancy him enough to be like, yes, he's part of my eleven, or yes, he's always gonna. He got into the squad because of injuries, so we don't know if he's gonna get into the the next squad. So, what do you think is happening there? Why is he not, you know? Um, I don't, I, I don't know what it is. I mean, for me. Jack would be my England squad. I don't know if, if he would start week in, week out for, for England, but he definitely he definitely brings something different because he's a, he's a different player. You know what I mean? I'd, it would definitely be my my 11, you know. I know some people say he holds on to the ball a bit too long. He does this, he does that. You know what I mean? But I think he's a quality quality midfielder. You know what I mean? And um, he's, he's, he's a club captain. Team's doing really well at, at, at the moment. And I don't see why he wouldn't be in a squad. I don't know why he got in there under the circumstances that he did. I think he should have been in a in in in, in the first pick squad instead of coming in, like you said, for injury. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and obviously, um, we've seen what's happened, especially where you're based, in the last few months with Black Lives Matter. Um, the mm-hmm. Premier League picked it up as well. The the players and felt that they they needed to do something to raise awareness. What are your thoughts on it, and what are your thoughts on? What's the, the Premier League stands on 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 the movement? I'll be honest. Um, yes, we've seen some movement. I'm I'm proud of all the players of of what they're doing because you know I, when I was playing football, it would be t-shirt, you know, kick it out. You run the pitch, you walk up on it, you take it off, and that's that's all it felt like. You know, oh, you know, we're showing something now. We're doing more than showing something. You know, we we we're kind of standing up, standing up for. For our rights, you know, I know it's only um, kneeling, but you know we have to take one step at a time. And so far, I feel that we're going in the right direction. It's nice to see players standing up, um, talking up, and speaking their minds a little bit more mm-hmm. than um, before, where we, you know, players will probably just keep it quiet. You know, what I mean, you probably hear in a in a newspaper, you know, a, a black player got um, abuse. You won't know about the name. You just hear about it. But now players are coming out. You know, power of social media. People are speaking up. You know, so so um, I'm I'm definitely proud of the players. There's a lot more to to do. It's not gonna it's not gonna get fixed overnight. But like you said, I feel that we we're, we're definitely taking steps in the right direction, even though it is small, but it's the right direction. And what do you think can be done going forward that will be more meaningful and not just uh, you know uh, just uh, something that is just being done for the sake of it? I'll be honest, I just really feel that it's a togetherness. You know, um, being out here in America and seeing um, the basketball players, obviously, the majority of the basketball, the NBA, is black. Mm. majority of the NFL is black. You know what I mean? And there's like a brotherhood. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They, they, they have meetings, you know, even just over the phone, whatever it is. And, you know, um, when you see them boycott one of the games in the bubble, you know, because one other team did. You know, what I mean, we we only gonna get anywhere if anyone's everyone sticks together, and and I feel that's the way forward. We just keep sticking together, st- keep having conversations, even if it's uncomfortable. You know, what I mean, um, it's the same as a, a, a relationship. If you're in a relationship, you have to have uncomfortable conversations with your your wife or whoever your partner is. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, and it will make your relationship better. And it's the same within the sports. If you talk. We're going to resolve a lot more than than you know just kind of shut, shutting up and kicking the ball. And obviously, in the basketball terms, LeBron James got picked out 
and they used to say, you know, just shut up and dribble. Yeah. But now, you know, he's coming out and speaking his mind and, and other players are coming out and speaking their mind. I know it's in two different countries, but, you know, um, somewhere, somewhere, something has to give, you know what I mean? But he, he only can give, like, one player can't do it by himself. You know what I mean? You can't have a Raheem Sterling coming out and speaking by himself. Yes, it's, it's great that a young black man can do that. But he needs other, other, other players to do it as well. White, black, Hispanic. Everybody needs to come out and stand up for a cause. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely spot on. Without the together, it will always be a battle that yeah. it feels like we're, we're fighting. But did you experience any during your time? Was it, was it different? Or? Yeah, um, I experienced a bit um, playing in, you know, for Fulham when we played in uh, Europe. Um, experience some, some there, experience a little bit, maybe like everybody else against Millwall. You know, um, but I was the first person going to, you know, told the manager. I was actually on the bench, actually. I was on the bench. Um, we played a Millwall, I think, in a cup, and he rested most of the first team. Went for a warm up. <laughs> Never felt abuse like that. Police officers on the, on the side of the wall, just standing there, not doing nothing. You know what I mean? The only thing I done, I just kind of clapped back to the fans to kind of let them know that your words don't hurt me. But I sat back down, told the manager, we just never went back out for a warm-up again. You know what I mean? And obviously told it, and the directors got found out and then it, nothing really come of it. You know what I mean? And um, that's the disgusting thing about it. Like, oh, it's okay, it's Millwall. Oh, it's okay, it's Millwall. No, it's not okay. And even when I wind our players, I said to wind our players, you have to put this every week. He said, uh, it's okay because I play for them. I said, what the fuck? You know, basically, like, what do you mean it's okay? And this is, this is where we are because oh, cause, cause they accept me, it's okay. And if, if that's the attitude that we're going to have, <laughs> we're not going to get too far, you know? Yeah. So, so, so I definitely feel it for these players. You know, there's, there's nobody can tell you wrong, the right way or the wrong, the, the wrong or right way to deal with that because everybody takes something differently. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, some people, it can be water off a duck's back. Some people, they might get upset, they might walk off the pitch. So when someone's saying, someone who's a white person or who's never been through something like that, saying, oh, you should stay on the pitch. Is that right to stay on the pitch? Yeah, it might be right to let them know that, but it still hurts because it hurts because nobody's helping. There's no help. Nobody's doing nothing. The referee's not stopping the game. That fan's still there. They might get told off three months later on. But it happened at that present time. So, so it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, that's what. That's why I think our footballing bodies need to, even till today, when when someone or a club are found racist, they give them a fine that, that they probably couldn't care less about and then they keep it moving. But then every single time there's a new racial video or stop racism um, video, or, you know, all of that stuff. So, and even with the opposition player saying, because I play for them, it's fine. That's, that's not going to help. Yeah, it, 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 it doesn't even help when like, you know, when someone, like even if it was like a, a white player, say, let's just say he says something to an next black player on the opposite side. And then that black teammate comes out afterwards saying, no, I've never seen him like that. I never, like, you shouldn't stick up for that. Yeah, we understand that that's a cover-up. If someone if that someone's first go-to is racist, that's what they are. You know what I mean? But when it goes back to the governing bodies, there need to be more ethnic people behind the scenes as well. Because if you look on a board, it might be one person, and that one person, yeah, he done what he done to get there, but he's not going to speak his voice because he knows if I say the wrong thing, I'm out again. Oh, yeah. But if you've got like a over people who are singing from the same hymn sheet as you, it's a lot, it's a lot easier. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's tough. It's tough when you've got one, one black person on a board of maybe 12 white people. And then, you know, you're always going against, you're always fighting every day. Yes, you want someone to fight, but then eventually you're going to get thrown out. You know what I mean? So, so you need, we, we, we need more black people on TV. We need more black coaches. We need more... We just need more black people everywhere in these areas to, to, to help out. You know what I mean? Especially with coaching, because like I said, sometimes a coach can understand a, black, a young black kid in a different way where maybe a, um, a white man wouldn't understand it. 
and that's no disrespect. It's just the just the way people are brought up, and everyone's got different personalities. And when you can when you can understand something a little bit better, it makes it a little bit easier. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, so we definitely you. need to look at the, look at a bigger picture and think where can we where can we um, help each other? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean from from what I, I saw from this time around, it seemed that there was a lot more white players that were willing to kind of try and understand and support the movement, which I guess is 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 better than it was before. So I definitely think we're get, we're, we're getting somewhere. Zach, thank you so much um, for joining us today. You know, I appreciate. I love the fact that you remember everything because you know the cliche <laughs> it being a while ago, people will forget, but. You 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 had a you had an amazing career. Not how many people can say they've they've played over three hundred games of professional football. So you know, congratulations to you, and thank you so much for taking time out for us today. I appreciate you having me, and um, you know, hope, hope your platform just keeps growing and growing. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. God bless. You. <laughs>